G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy, and uh, I, it has come to my attention we're a little bit overdue for a draft video. I've been doing phantom drafts in July and August, this will be my third, and we're in the middle of September now, so this will probably be the last phantom draft before the trade period where everything is going to get messed up in terms of the order, um, but for the time being we're going to have a crack at predicting the first 40 picks. Obviously, it's not so much a, a prediction in that I'm trying to get all 40 right. It's just a bit of a fun exercise to map out the best names on offer, you know, in this upcoming draft and, you know, contemplating clubs' needs as well, which is tricky. So the last two videos I did for you involve the top 20. I mapped out the top 20, but I'm going to have a crack at a top 40 today, which was much more difficult. My assessment so far is that the top 20 prospects are, you know, pretty strong. And then after that top 20 or 25, it feels like most of the prospects between that 25 to 40 range have some flaw with their game or it becomes a little bit harder to judge the depth of this draft but we are you know the trade period hasn't happened yet and then of course there's the draft combine and therefore so much can change between now and then but I'm going to go through the top 40 in this video like I said and uh, as a result I'm going to have to go through them a little bit quicker than I have in previous videos. Before we crack into it, uh, we have a goal in this channel of getting 50% of the people who watch this channel regularly subscribe to the channel. And uh, I think this is the closest we've gotten for some time with 47.9 of you who watch the videos having actually subscribed to the channel. So if you are enjoying the content, it is completely free to subscribe. You'd just be helping boost up uh, me in the algorithm and I would really appreciate it. So it's time to crack into the draft pick by pick. Uh, this is the first draft that I'm doing for you where West Coast hold pick one and I'm going to keep that as is for now. In previous drafts, I've had, you know, some, some exceptions. The, the only one I'll really add to this, or this two, is that I'm giving North once again band one compensation for Mackay. Obviously, that's still yet to play out, but they're going to have picks two and three in this draft. And uh, with Gold Coast pick four, I've decided to reallocate that to Richmond as I did in the July edition, I think. I think the last video, I gave it to the Western Bulldogs. Honestly, that pick could end up any number of places. The only reason I picked Richmond is that they don't have a first round draft pick this year and it has been reported they're public, publicly interested. The Bulldogs have also been tipped to be considered to uh, be a chance to get pick four, but they hold picks 10 and 17 and their priority will probably be trading those picks down and Gold Coast, whoever they trade it to, will probably be looking for future picks as well. So I think Richmond's more likely of the two sides to get that pick. So Richmond will have Gold Coast pick four. Also try to consider, you know, potential deals and, you know, looking through all the trade rumors and stuff and which first rounders are likely to end up at which clubs. And, you know, other than the Mackay deal, which is likely to get band one compensation, I don't know if the top 20 picks will shift around a little bit. Maybe St Kilda end up parting ways with pick 12 for Liam Henry. I think that's a pretty steep price, but it could happen. But in this video, I've decided to keep the rest of the top 20 uh, as it is. So no more fun around. Let's get on the board with West Coast and surprise, surprise, they're going to take Harley Reid. I think he's going to be the poster boy for the new marketing campaign. The new generation of Eagles, he's going to be the face of that, you'd think. And I think the Eagles will be open to trading that pick, but it will take a substantial price. And I wonder if they will price themselves out of the market and Harley Reid will end up at West Coast. At pick two, I've got North Melbourne bidding on Gold Coast Jed Walter. Best key position player in the draft and conceivably could be pick one in most other years. He is a fantastic talent and Gold Coast will naturally match and get him at pick two. So North and Melbourne are now on the board with two picks and the conversation around who they've been picking has shifted a little bit in recent times. Dan Curtin's sort of one player that's moved up the rankings and then subsequently down. I think they're going to go tall and small at this pick and I think Colby McKercher is the best available talent at this pick and therefore I think he goes pick three to uh, North Melbourne, the Tasmanian midfielder, best pure midfielder in the draft if you exclude Harley Reid as a pure midfielder. Super damaging player, probably you know, I'd really love to get this guy at West Coast. And if we West Coast did trade away pick one, I'd love to somehow get McKercher. But McKercher to North, and that's followed by a decision to go tall at this pick because North Melbourne have some pretty good mediums and smalls. And, uh, you know, it's been well publicized. They haven't gone tall in the first round for a long time now. So Daniel Curtin comes in, and obviously with Mackay leaving, that's a positional need as well. So it may be a bit of a reach. Is he the next most talented player? I'm not sure. But McKercher and Curtin join North Melbourne, followed by Hawthorne. I'm backing in Zane Dozmer again. I think he was ranked third on Toomey's last form guide. He could conceivably go pick four to North Melbourne as well, but uh, I, as I said, I think more of a positional need for North uh, is Daniel Curtin, and therefore Zane Dozmer, like I've had in the last 
well, certainly the last one. He'll join the Hawks. He is a very, very talented medium forward. So now Richmond are on the board. Uh, and this, you know, this may not be their pick. So it's a bit of a weird one. I considered that they need to replenish pretty much every aspect of their list. Obviously sort of going through a transitional period. And I considered the best available midfielder. But they may still do that. But I think I am just going to go for the most talented player in Nick Watson. He's a small forward, 170 centimeters. We talked about him on this channel a lot. And while he's really small, his prodigious talent makes him a good pick for Richmond here. Who obviously... Obviously got Taranto and Hopper, so maybe the midfield can take a break in terms of this pick six. So Watson to Richmond, then Melbourne's on the board, and I've got them bidding on Ruckman, Ethan Reed from the Gold Coast Suns, which will be subsequently matched. I think Melbourne do need a Ruck, and that's why I picked them there, but obviously it doesn't really matter. Ethan Reed's probably going to go in the top 10 as the best Ruck in this year's draft. Gold Coast get their second top seven pick. Melbourne's back on the board, and uh, I have them probably replenishing their midfield with the best available midfielder, in my opinion, and that's Riley Sanders, the Tasmanian Lark medalist. He was very, very well performed at the champs, and obviously... Um, it remains to be seen whether North Melbourne get access to Sanders, but for, for now he's in the open pool and I've got Melbourne taking him. I'm doubling or even tripling down on Connor O'Sullivan going to GW West, the New South Welshman, which makes it three or four uh, allies players picked in the top 10, which would have to be a first. Really good intercept player and, you know, GWS's uh, list management strategy will also pay attention to the fact that he is from New South Wales and also pretty much right there on talent as well. So I think that is a good pick for them. I have Geelong then bidding on father son Jordan Croft from the Western Bulldogs, which will be subsequently matched. So this one's a little hard to predict because Bulldogs will almost certainly trade their picks away. They've got 10 and 17. They'll probably trade down. Uh, for simplicity, I'm just going to absorb the Western Bulldogs pick 10 or whatever it is right now into this pick, and then I'm going to give them pick 17 later on in this draft. But Jordan Croft for the Western Bulldogs and Geelong are back on the clock, and we've got a little bit of a slider in Nate Caddy, who I think I had at pick four or five last time I did this video. Honestly, Caddy is still considered in the top echelon of players. I just have him sliding a little bit on need. I don't know if GWS would take the risk on Caddy and Melbourne, you know, faced with the best available midfielder or a more of a third tall utility who could play in the center. He has a chance to go to Melbourne, but I have Geelong uh, picking up Caddy as well and truly best available. That means Essendon's on the clock and obviously with Zerk Thatcher leaving and uh, they were already on the market for a key defender, I think they'll go for the prospect of Ollie Murphy, the 199 centimeter key defender. They'll also be cognizant of the fact that it's a strong first round for key defenders and Murphy is the next best good one. There's a number of teams picking after the Essendon that also need a key back, which we'll get to now. Adelaide's on the board. I've got them bidding on Hawthorne, Father, Son at Will McCabe. Now, this is a little bit early for McCabe. I think Toomey had him around about 15 to 18 in these last two Phantoms. But the Crows are on the hunt for a key defensive prospect, as are Sydney after that. So Hawthorne will uh, naturally match this bid at pick 13, which puts Adelaide back on the clock. And they're in the awkward position now with Murphy, Curtin, and McCabe all gone in front of them. I would have normally liked to have picked a tall defender for them, but they're going to go best available and they're going to pick a bolter in Caleb Windsor, 185 centimeter wingman, very classy outside player. Is it a positional need in terms of their list? Probably not. I suppose Crows fans would know better than myself, but in my opinion, close to best available. And that's also followed by Sydney, again on the market for a key defender, probably just missed that glut of um, key defensive talent in the first round. So I've got them taking Darcy Wilson, who has slid a little bit to pick 15. He's probably going to go a little bit earlier than that, uh, but a very exciting outside utility forward kind of type. So again, classic best available. Then we've got the Saints, and uh, I, again, find it a little bit tricky to plot what is a list need for St. Kilda. I suppose Billings and Gresham are leaving, so I did consider a forward, but I'm just going to go best available, and they're going to take Jake Leake from Tasmania, a running defender who adds a lot of running carry. I think he played forward recently and kicked five goals as well, so showing some versatility. Toomey's got him ranked about that 15 to 16 mark in his own phantom guide as well, so he caps off being the fifth Allies player, I believe, in the opening round of the draft, which is crazy. Melbourne's now back on the clock with their own uh, first rounder, which has come down a little bit naturally because they went out in straight sets recently. And they're in a position to probably take a little bit of a risk. And I've got them reaching a bit for Colton Tholstrup. They've added Riley Sanders. Riley Sanders is a safe bet in this. Colton Tholstrup, probably that's a little bit early for him at pick 17, but he's a talented player as a dynamic sort of forward midfielder. He's got, you know, athleticism. He hits the scoreboard and he does have that high ceiling potential, you'd think. I think his performances this year haven't been super strong, but he has been playing seniors in the waffle all year, so it's a little bit harder to stand out. So again, a little bit of a reach. He'll probably go more likely in the 20s, but Melbourne having so many picks in this draft can probably afford to reach for the best available talent. Then North Melbourne 
Melbourne or on the board because Port Adelaide obviously also went out in straight sets and they hold Port Adelaide's first round pick. Uh, so they're back into the top 20. This is big uh, 18, but they'll bid on Jake Rogers, the Gold Coast Suns Academy, a smaller midfield type. Again, uh, the Academy picks, it's hard to project who's going to actually bid on them, who's going to bother. But North Melbourne now have done it twice in the same draft and they'll bid on Jake Rogers, who will be matched by the Gold Coast Suns. And with their own pick, North Melbourne take Riley Hardiman, a strong marking intercept defender with a bit of potential to go into the midfield. I think that balances the draft out nicely after getting McKercher and Curtin and then Sheasel and Wardlaw last year. Maybe someone with a defensive edge is who they go for and this is about his range. So rounding out the top 20, you've got Judas back on the board. They have obviously gone tall with Connor O'Sullivan as the first pick and I think they might go tall again and pick the Ruckman Will Green. I think they're going to lose Matthew Flynn more likely than not in this offseason and it's nice to have a Project Ruck on the list now. So that's the top 20 done and now for the first time this year, we're going to crack have a crack at picks 21 to 40, which means Carlton are now on the board. Obviously, this shit pick could shift if they make it to the grand final, but this is assuming that they don't. I've given them Archie Roberts, the best available running defender uh, from Victoria. He has been around this range. This is actually probably pretty good value for a player of his quality. Again, I find Carlton a little bit of a harder one to pick in terms of what they really need and, and who they acquire in the trade and free agency period is also a factor. You know, if they get Gresham, they probably won't pick a small forward. But if they don't get Gresham, which I have no idea at this point, it's still very, very murky. Uh, I've got them taking Archie Roberts. And if they don't, they'll get the guy, I think, at the next pick with the Western Bulldogs. I've got them taking Jack Deline, who is a small forward out of South Australia, who hits the scoreboard really, really consistently. And I think the Bulldogs, uh, I would have loved to replace their midfield a little bit in this draft but there was also a little bit of a need for a genuine small forward who hits the scoreboard so with Croft and Deline they've strengthened their forward line and with later picks will look for midfielders. Collingwood are on the board now and uh, I think this is not the first time I've made them this pick for them but they'll take the project tall forward in Archer Reed, who is the probably the next best available key forward prospect. He's 201 centimetres, super athletic, brother of Zach Reid at Essendon as well. And, you know, with the Collingwood being right in the thick of the premiership cycle right now, they're in a position to go tall on a project tall. So that gives West Coast the next pick. And I have them reaching a little bit for their own next generation academy player in Lance Collard, who has enjoyed a really good back end of the season. Kicked multiple bags of five in the Colts. He's very raw, very shy. I don't know how well he's going to interview, but his talent alone has made him really rise up the rankings later. And I've got West Coast reaching for him, perhaps a little bit early because Fremantle are picking in two picks and I really want Lance Collard. Then I've got Adelaide picking at pick 25 and I've got them taking Harry Demetia, the uh, speedy midfielder forward out of Victoria. Again, I would have loved to have gone tall with this pick, but I think this is probably just a case of best available. A key defender would have been lovely, but I just don't know if there are any around this range, which puts Fremantle on the board for the first time in this draft. I've got them taking a bit of a riskier one, but with a high potential ceiling in Ashton Moyer, who is... Started the year as arguably the best talent behind Harley Reid, at least considered sort of at the end of last year, and he's really fallen away this year. Little bit of question mark over his application, but Fremantle, you know, will constantly be looking for ways to improve their scoring power, and Ashton Moyer certainly delivers on that. He's a very talented medium forward. Then the Sydney Swans are up with pick 27, and I'm just looking at who I took for them in the first pick. It was Darcy Wilson. I think they'll go tall this one. Uh, they're likely to get Brody Grundy and potentially Ben Mackay, so they're going to get a couple of talls through free agency and trade but I think they'll draft a project ruck here in Mitch Edwards who at the start of the year was considered the best ruck prospect in the draft pool and has fallen away a little bit in recent times but he's been compared to a young Tim English. Hickey's retired, he's replaced by Grundy but obviously Grundy's not a super young man himself, he'll be 30 next year so with a view to the future, Mitch Edwards goes to the Sydney Swans and Adelaide are back on the board and I've got them taking 191 centimeter midfielder in Joel Frazier. Again, not really sure if I'm hitting any particular list needs for Adelaide. It's going to be a case of best available and Frazier does seem like a pretty high potential player. Melbourne's now back on the board and I have got them looking again to their midfielder and taking the best available young midfielder in Charlie Edwards who has shot into Toomey's top 25 with some recent form. He's 190 centimetres. Again, Melbourne will be considering their list transition in a world past Petrarca and Oliver and having support come from below. Obviously, Viney's not really getting any younger either. He'll be 30 next year. So Charlie Edwards joins Melbourne followed by another big body midfielder in George Stevens at pick 30 to Richmond, who again is 189 uh, centimetres and 90 
93 kilos and he spent time both as a forward and as a defender as well. So Richmond addressed their midfield there. Then we've got Brisbane entering the draft for the first time. I've got them taking young Cohen Sanchez from Western Australia. Again, this is a little bit of a reach, but we're starting to get into the draft where it's a little bit murkier. And before the draft combine, it's a little bit harder to project exactly where people will go. But Sanchez has proven himself a very adept small forward. And, you know, Brisbane with Charlie Cameron, he's 30 next year again, I think. And of course, Kai Lohman is more likely to leave Brisbane than he is to stay at the moment. So in terms of young small forward stocks, I think Sanchez makes sense. We'll rattle through the last nine picks or so. I've got Essendon taking 189 centimeter Angus Hasty. He's another running defender. In addition to who else have I got for them? I gave them Ollie Murphy. So strengthening the back line there after adding to the midfield in the last two first rounds. Sydney are on the board and I'm being a little bit lazy here, but I've got them uh, just taking their own academy player in Caden Cleary. I think a bid will come at some point and it's going to absorb this pick. And he's 180 centimeters, small bodied midfielder. But you know, if you look at the Errol Golden model, they did bowl out of their own academy in that particular sense. I've got St Kilda taking a forward midfielder in Harvey Johnston, 184 centimetres out of Victoria. Again, possibly going to lose both Billings and Gresham. If not both, they'll probably lose at least one, you'd think. From a positional point of view, that makes sense. Melbourne then take Luaman Luau. Uh, when I see his name, I want to say Lululemon, but he is a pretty highly rated 181 centimetre small defender. West Coast on the board, and I've got them addressing their midfield with uh, Clay Hall out of Western Australia, 190 centimetres. West Coast still have a need to replenish their midfield, and who knows exactly how when what player Harley Reid will be and Collard is probably more of a forward than he is a wingman. Collingwood's back on the board after taking Archer Reid and they'll add Nathan Philactides. I hope I'm saying that right. Another small defender out of Vic Metro. In the last three picks, I've got the Bulldogs taking Tasmanian running defender Ari Schoenmaker who's had a pretty good second half of the year. Sort of like a long-limbed, loping running defender. Port Adelaide go local with 193 centimeter defender Will Patton who's not quite key position height but he's showing a lot of potential. And then finally at pick 40 West Coast go tall and pick a fourth ruck on the list. Obviously, I'm not sure if they go for Matthew Flynn, but I think another project ruck is on the cards. And Taylor Goad out of South Australia, the 200 centimeter project ruck, is someone that we've been linked to. And I think there's a chance we pull the trigger on him at pick 40. So there you go, guys. That is my attempt at a top 40, just to get some more names out there. Obviously, as we get closer to the draft, we'll be able to give you a little bit more detail on some of these players. And of course, there'll be more content, not just from myself, but across the board. But let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with, what did you think of my haul there? Uh, you know, I'm sure I can find some own notes with my, you know, selections. I would have probably liked to have picked a genuine tall for Melbourne, but it just never felt like there was one really on offer in their picks. Potentially Will Green at pick 17 or even Mitch Edwards. But this is uh, particularly hard to do, uh, particularly when you're still learning about some of the names yourself. So as always, guys, I appreciate the support. Hope you're enjoying the content. As always, look forward to your feedback as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.